With a converter, that's totally different, right? Because you really make sure that there's always a profit margin in between. So that's, it's a, it's a different business case if you look at it that way. Good afternoon, Konstantin Berger, Rock Tech. How are you doing? Hi, Andy. I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing very well. So, um, interesting projects or interesting company that you got here. Um, give me the 30,000 foot view. Yep. Yep. And, uh, thanks for having me on. You're very so, welcome. Rock Tech Lithium, Canadian company. Um, we have a mining project in Ontario. It's called the Georgia Lake project. We took over the company in 2012. And since then have developed that uh, project, but recently we're more focused on lithium refining. So what happened was in 2019, um, a few of us went to China. We saw what the Chinese were doing in terms of downstream refining and that really the bottleneck in the, in the whole industry is, is refiners and, and, and converters. And so in 2020, then took the decision to also build lithium refineries and our flagship project is the Bubin converter, which is a 24,000 ton lithium refinery that we're building in Germany. And we have an offtake agreement with Mercedes-Benz valued at around about 1.5 billion euros in terms of offtake. Okay. So let's back up a little bit here just for all of, this is a different take. If you want exposure to the lithium market, correct me if I'm wrong. You are not um, on the, well, you're not focusing on the mining side of lithium. You're focusing on the refining side of uh, lithium, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. So that is huge. And what's huge is because it really makes you different than just about every other lithium company that I interview and talk with. Uh, so let's back up a little bit. Tell me about the, the business model here. And you said you had a uh, contract or you have a client in Mercedes Benz in Germany. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So that's a binding take or pay off take agreement that we signed in, in 2022. So what's interesting about lithium converters. You know, you, you pack the input price to the output price of that plan and it's, it's, it's a margin business, right? So, um, you never, you never left hanging in the middle. We all know that, uh, you know, my can be quite cyclical and sometimes not, not a lot of fun with a converter. That's totally different, right? Because you really make sure that there's always a profit margin in between. So that's, it's a, it's a different business case if you look at it that way. Okay. Can I ask you a little bit more about the converter business here? Are you putting this on cars, automobiles? What is that exactly does that mean? Yeah. So what you get is a, a lithium chemical, lithium hydroxide, which is the precursor material to, to cathodes and in the end batteries for electric vehicles. And our plant has a capacity of around about 500,000 cars per year. Got it. So you control that converter or you make the converter if you would for Mercedes Benz, is that correct? I mean, you know, there's a strategic interest in that product, right? Uh, <laughs> and then not enough of these converters, neither in Europe nor in the US or Canada. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Very interesting here. Okay. So work that out again a little bit before for me, because that is what the business that you are focusing on. You have Mercedes Benz and what's the, uh, the demand for your product here? And do you have other clients that are either that you can talk about that you are either close to having or have, if you would, again, that you can talk about. If what you guys are interested in, I know. <laughs> so, you know, when you, when you look at the forecasting agencies, such as Benchmark or Fastmark or so few of the others, they think that we need between five and eight of these plants in Europe and the same amount in North America. Okay. So, I'll get to you again. So they, they've told you you need five to eight of these plants in Europe and five to eight of these plants in North America. How many plants do you have running now? In Europe, there's none. And in the U S there is one hopefully coming to production soon, but you know, ramp up is also not a thing of two months. So yeah. Bottom line is you need more of these, of these facilities. Yes. Okay. I am completely hijacking you and I apologize for that, but it's over the time. And then, and then, so in terms of, you know, strategic partners, are you aware, I mean, you're probably aware of the, there's two basic chemistries about cathode, right? So there's LFP and then there's NMC. Um, we see a lot of LFP batteries coming out of China. It's cheaper to produce, uh, but the Chinese have a huge advantage in terms of patents and knowledge. You know, what do we do in the U S um, we need to bring that machinery and the equipment and we need to build more LFP plants also in Europe. But then with the NMC cathode, um, uh, make sure you go farther with your cars. It's for premium cars. 
So probably in terms of strategic customers, you have a 50-50 split in the end, which is kind of mass produce electric vehicles, but then also uh, more premium cars such as Mercedes, BMW, Lucid, Tesla, and whatnot. But okay. the automakers are the ones that are the partners for this because they are the ones that also have the capital to invest into these uh, supply chains. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they have billions and millions of dollars. So that leads me to my next question, really. What is the cost on uh, getting a... Uh, Get a location, a factory, um, a plant, whatever you call it, uh, up and running. What's the cost associated with that? What's the time frame? Is there permitting yeah. involved in any of this? And um, yeah. 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 Look, it's a big infrastructure project. Um, so you need round about 800 million euros for such a plant. Um, you need a permitting process, always depending on a jurisdiction, between two and five years. Uh, Germany is pretty straightforward because there's a lot of chemical industry already in Germany. So our permitting is completely done. So that means we have received the permits for construction and operations of the plant. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a big permitting process that you go through. Hence also, you know, we had, have a team of 40 engineers that were constantly working on this. So it's not, it's not an easy task, um, but, but we do it nonetheless. Um, and, and in terms of, uh, debt to equity mix, you see something between 60 to 65% debt of, on that CapEx and, and 35 to 40% equity. That is without any government subsidies, uh, which we have also applied for and are currently expecting to get around about a hundred million euros in subsidies from the German government. From Germany. And, and again, why is that important? Because obviously you want to compete with the Asian players and you know, sure. who's the biggest is China. So. In North America, but also in Europe, you need to somehow work with those capex numbers and 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 get support to make sure that you're on a, on a international level playing field, and actually really make sure that uh, that we build this infrastructure in Europe and North America. Because without yeah. supply chains, there won't be any EV supply chain. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Very interesting. So it also makes sense that you're building a plant, in, or you would be building a plant in Germany. Um, cause that's where Mercedes Benz, Porsche, Volkswagen, BMW, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. The big auto players are, I would say they're in, I don't know, Italy or France, I guess. Um, so you're centrally located. Um, the second question is, and this is just our curiosity is you would build, if you were to build one in North America, would it be in Canada, in Ontario, or would that be in, I don't know how much of a difference that makes, but would that be in Detroit, uh, the Michigan area? So in terms of. Shipping the product and in terms of getting the engineering right, it doesn't really make a lot of difference if it's the southern Canadian states or the northern U.S. states. Right. Um, you know, OPEX is something that we want to look at, right? So where does the gas and electricity come from? Uh, there's a lot of clean energy in Canada, but, um, you know, maybe there's, there's solar power and whatnot to be used to fill down in the states. So, so the OPEX consideration tells you a bit where you want to put that plant, but in terms of shipping the products and shipping it to, you know, the, the GMs and the forts of the world, Really, doesn't really matter between Canada. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we did our first scoping study for a North American plant. So the clear goal after you know the Euro plant is financed, we come to America. Um, we have that Jordan Lake project, which is a mining project in Ontario that I spoke about earlier. And once you integrate a mining project with a downstream refining project, then that really becomes very, very interesting in terms of margins and 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 lower opex. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so let's wrap on this about the, um, about the timeline is, or I guess the plan is what is, what is the ETA on getting one built? Do you expect it in Europe? And then the ETA, if you bring this over to America, are you looking to have this built in the next two to five years? Just give me some kind of round, round figures there. Yeah. So it's a 36 months of build and ramp up process. That's not bad. Which you start once you know, FID is done, uh, which we're working towards in Germany. Um, so I won't give you a time when we start because, you know, we need to put the financing together, which we're currently doing. So we're hoping it's this year, but, you know, I won't tell you Q1 or Q2 because, yeah, it's, it's just, it's a moving target. And then we're thinking from what our engineers tell us, we can be 20 to 30% cheaper and faster when we do it again in, in North America. Okay. So we're looking at 29, 30 in yeah. Europe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, with, so within this decade, for sure in Europe, and then you know, probably end of this decade, beginning of next decade in, in North America. Okay, excellent. So let's talk about your share structure now and uh, your financials here. I did go over your financials. They are posted on your website, but I'd like for you to tell me um, 
Let's start with what kind of capital do you currently have in the bank that's getting ready to be deployed? Yep. So in terms of our corporate structure, we have RockTech Inc., which is the listed entity in Canada, which is a TSX listed company. Uh, and then we have the two subsidiaries, which is the FPV for Canada, which is the MI, and the S2 for Germany, which is the converter. So we're currently running with, I think, five or $4.8 million uh, in cash okay. on the link. But the financing of those projects always happens on the asset level, right? So we would never give out more shares on the Inc for something like 150 or $200 million financing. This is always private equity coming in on the asset level. Okay. So what, what, what the holding does, and uh, you know, this is where I'm employed and, and most of my colleagues, it makes sure that we advance this project and bring them to FID, but then we bring in strategic partners on the asset level. Yeah. Right. In terms of share structure, um, when we took over the company in 2012, it was basically high net worth individuals from Canada and, and Germany who did that. It's a group of investors. So via capital increase, uh, took over majority of RockTech. And nowadays, it's, um, I think this is public. Peter Thiel has, uh, has been invested since uh, 2021. Um, there's a few others from the North American market that are invested uh, in a few high net worth individuals, family offices from Europe. And then on the institutional side, it's a bit lower. Just because currently we're working, you know, with, with our cornerstone shareholders that advance the project. But clearly my goal is, you know, to get the story out also in North America and then also get some more traction on the institutional side of things. Got it. Okay. Um, what would you like? What's the one thing you'd like to tell investors right now? And is there any news that you can talk about coming out in the next six to nine months? There's, there's, there's two things. One is uh, the deal that, you, that we just did in Europe. And so we announced last week that uh, we're merging with a lithium project in Bosnia, which is on the Balkans, and it's uh, to the western side of uh, where the Rio Tinto project is, so the Rio Tinto Jada project, which is one of the biggest lithium projects worldwide. Why do we do that? Because we also want to build an integrated supply chain in Europe. So shipping lithium sulfate probably, or lithium chloride, so an intermediate product, from Bosnia to Germany, and then converting it to battery-grade materials. Basically doing the same thing in North America between Georgia Lake and, and a second converter plant that we're building in North America. And uh, that's very interesting because Europe currently is fully dependent on raw materials, not only from North America, but also from, from, from the Asian parts of the world. So that's, you know, especially in the current market environments and geopolitical environments of utmost importance to create your uh, supply chains. Yeah. Let me interrupt you, you believe briefly. So this deal that you did in Bosnia, and I apologize, yeah. I didn't get the chance to see or review the press release, you now have a lithium mine, so you have access to the raw materials. Is that correct? It's early stage. It's a lithium project. It's not a mine yet. It's, right. Uh, so we're hoping to do more drilling. Um, and yeah, then... So it's in the ground. Yeah. 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 So it's not, a, not an exit mine yet. Excellent. Well, you're right. You really want to build out the whole chain yourself so you control everything. Correct. Ideally. E I think we need to learn from the Asians, right? Yeah, no yeah, kidding. I mean, yeah, no kidding. Well yeah. done. Huh, interesting. Okay, great. And then so, and then so secondly, really, I, I would like you to, to look into everything around lithium conversion, right? So having a, a lithium mine is obviously the get-go and the starting point, but really, you know, we need to think about where do we refine these raw materials, who are we selling it to, where's, you know, where the cathode producers coming in. So, so I'm fully convinced that in North America, but also Europe, we need a working battery supply chain because otherwise we are dependent on other parts of the world. And we don't want to because it's such an important part of the industry. Yeah. Because think about your know, defense, automotive, uh, energy storage, all of that is dependent on that, in, on that value chain. Yeah. You know, it reminds me, this was a couple of years ago when uh, Elon Musk wasn't in the news every single day. Yeah. And he, he talked about um, buying what he was looking into doing is just really buying a silver mine, just buying a copper mine. So again, he would be more, even more in control of the, uh, the, the first start, if you would, throughout the whole supply chain, because he didn't want to be dependent on whoever, whether that's... Uh, Another mine, another company, or another country where he was get his materials to uh, build his cars and his batteries. So, very interesting. Yes, so, sir. 
Excellent. All right, Constantine. Well, I want to thank you so much uh, for coming on. If people want to know more, uh, get to know more about you and the company, yep. how do you go about doing that and what platforms are you traded on or exchanges are you traded on and what's your tickers? Yep. So the tick ticker in Canada is RCK. Uh, so it's easy to remember. Rock, uh, TSXV traded. Uh, look up our website, look up our investor materials. Uh, my email is also on, on, on the website. Uh, you know, I'm always happy to get in touch with uh, shareholders or future shareholders. And then uh, RJ, RJIB is the ticket for the Frankfurt exchange where we traded, um, which also I think gives you an interesting vibe because you have a trading window in, in Germany and Europe, and then you move over to Canada. So it's uh, it's quite quite exciting. Yeah, are you trading in on any of the U.S. exchanges as of right now? Uh, not yet, but obviously, you know, the American exchanges are super interesting also in terms of valuation for clean tech stories because yeah. again, it's not a pure mining story. Well, hopefully we get that soon. But at any rate, I believe people can buy you buy you then on. Um, I did not get paid for uh, saying this, but on interactive brokers, uh, they should have you listed because you can trade both uh, German and uh, Canadian shares uh, on that platform. So, correct, Constantine. I thank you so much uh, for coming on, and uh, hope to have you again uh, soon. Thank you, Andy. Thanks for taking the time. My pleasure. Take care. Take care.